Picture this, you're juggling multiple prescriptions, patient consultations, and endless hours of administrative tasks, all while maintaining a happy work-life balance. It's chaotic, it's stressful, and it's downright exhausting. Or maybe you're a student who's overwhelmed by all your assignments, exams, OSCEs, whilst attending hours and hours of lectures and labs and maintaining an active social life. What if I told you there's a way to streamline your week and reclaim a sense of control over your time? I think I can kickstart that journey. I've created a free PDF guide, five steps to streamline your week and add five hours to your schedule. In this guide, you'll learn how to optimize your workflow, prioritize your tasks, and carve out precious time for self-care and personal pursuits. Click the link below to grab the guide now. I promise you, your future self will thank you for it. Hey, my name is Anisha Patel, and I'm obsessed with all things career development. Whether that's navigating through your professional journey, gaining more clarity, identifying your passions, or gaining the confidence to chase your dreams, I'm here to support you to craft a roadmap to success. I am a pharmacist turned entrepreneur who's transformed my passions into purpose. I've grown a podcast that has reached thousands of people across the globe. I'm building an online business and I've left my nine to five to chase my dreams and build a career that I love. I've walked this path of transformation myself and now I'm here to share insights, strategies and stories to help you carve out a career that you love. Career opportunities, personal development, challenges, growth and building life skills are all things we discuss on this podcast. Whether you're sipping a cup of coffee, taking a walk or driving in the car, be prepared to be inspired and motivated to step outside of your comfort zone. This is the Pharmacist Diaries podcast. Welcome to Pharmacist Diaries, Jamie. You have no idea today, as, as much as all my guests have been wonderful and enjoyable and exciting and all of that, I have been looking forward to recording this episode with you for a long time when we're finally making uh, the space and energy to make that happen today. So um, yeah, welcome to the podcast and um, so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me on. I know we've talked about this conversation for a long time and excited and honored to be on your show. Thank you, Anisha. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm really glad that we found um, found each other through LinkedIn or I think I found you um, and reached out to you in, in the initial stages, especially because uh, the Wealthy White Coat podcast, um, I think, came onto my feed, which was really exciting, especially finding people who are within the pharmacy space who are podcasting. Of course, that connection makes sense for me uh, because there aren't that many podcasters in the UK in comparison. So for sure, I'm um, looking across the pond to to make um, new connections, new friends and find people in a similar kind of headspace as me. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that. But Whenever I kickstart the Pharmacist Diaries podcast, I usually ask why you became a pharmacist in the first place. Oh, yeah. So it was a very simple decision because I was in high school and I'm the oldest daughter, so I'm a very high achiever and I wanted to, you know, do something great in life. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And um, my dad worked as the CFO at the hospital. So he was the the financial guy at the ho local hospital system. And one day he came home from work and he said, Jamie, I signed the pharmacist paycheck every single month. And I really think you should be a pharmacist. That's <laughs> a great like, story. Okay, great. I could have a six-figure salary as a 24-year-old when I graduate. I could get a doctorate degree. I could do something in healthcare, but that's not like invasively touching people because I didn't want that. So it, like it checked all my boxes. I was like, great, sign me up. I will be a pharmacist that makes the decision easy. <laughs> Love that. And what was your journey like with regards to going to college and actually going into pharmacy school and navigating the career journey? Where did you see yourself um, or where did you envision that, you know, where you would be working as a pharmacist? So I always knew from the beginning, even in high school, that I wanted to have a family and I wanted to be a mother. And so I looked at everything through a career lens. And that was also another point of being a pharmacist, which way back then, like I could easily work part time. And so it 
was a great career for women, especially. And so I went to college at the University of Wyoming and I just busted through it as fast as possible. I did my prerequisites in two years and then got my doctorate degree in four years. So start to finish college was six years for me. And I just like put the blinders on and just went through it as fast as possible. And I really loved it. I loved college. If I could just be in college forever, I probably would. But I enjoyed the challenge. I don't think I'm naturally good at science. I don't love chemistry by any means, but like I can learn. And so I could do it. And that was a great confidence boost to be able to get a doctorate degree and a job right out of the gate. So the rest of my classmates were probably going above and beyond and like doing residencies and fellowships and like all these cool things within pharmacy. And I was just like, nope, get me to the paycheck. I just want to work in retail pharmacy, get paid and like clock in and clock out. That was my intention for work. And another reason I really liked retail pharmacy and why I chose it was because not only could I work part-time as a future parent, but also there's not a career ladder, Anisha. Like you're either a staff pharmacist and if you're really like doing great things, you could be the pharmacy manager and that's it. Like your whole career is spent in that box, whether you're in charge or the staff. And for me, I felt like, well, that's perfect. That's all I want. Like I don't want to sacrifice my career for having kids that way. Like if you're doing the same job for the rest of your life, it works really well. So <laughs> that's why I picked it. That's why I did. And it worked great for me. Well, it's good that you knew what your values were, like what your your vision was for the future in terms of family life and how work, again, like that's quite, when we look at um, intentional living, which is a big part of your life now, it obviously stemmed from from back then. You knew family life was actually what was really important to me. Mm -hmm. building that life is really important to me. And actually my work fits in with that. While most other people, including myself, focused on the career journey as the main objective. And then for me, like I had my first child six years ago and um, it is quite a shock to the system. And I think I wasn't quite prepared for what parenting was going to do in terms of my career, my time, my energy, my focus. Everything changes, especially in the first few years of, of parenting. The, the child changes, you change, and you have to keep up with that, which has been so challenging. And I don't think the second time around that it's actually been any easier. I think it's quite hard because now you're like doing it double time. But um, I think I still in my first, like when I had Liliana, I still tried to fit her in alongside work. And it's been a really like huge learning curve now the second time around I've become a parent that I'm really intentionally shifting that focus mm -hmm. and helping myself to realize and accept and be okay with the fact that actually family does come first and it's okay for your career to come second because I think in society and in pharmacy specifically that there is a big focus on being the best version of yourself, it's a very competitive market. Everyone's comparing themselves to other people. And I know that that is even bigger in the US than it is in the UK. I was just speaking to someone about the residency application process and how you, you know, uh, so an intern I spoke to flew to California. And it's like in this huge sort of exhibition center or conference center. And you basically have interviews from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m back to back like 30 plus interviews and I just think I don't know if I could do that right now like if that's the choice that I would have wanted to make um so my whole kind of like trajectory in terms of what my career looks like is starting to shift um and it's quite amazing and fascinating to see that yours you knew from early on and your you you, you know your vision was to focus on your life and that your job would fit in with that yeah, it's been really rewarding to, I guess, yeah, I guess I never thought about it in that way that I built my life and then have my job surrounding and supporting that. But 
it has worked very well and it's been fun. I worked full time for a few years before I had kids. And then I've since had four boys. So now I have four little boys that are adorable, wild maniacs. And it really does feel like they need to come first and my family needs to come first because work coming first, um, you just see what it does. It it destroys the most important things in our life. And it's easy to say like, well, we're we're doing it for our family. But if they never see you and you can't build those relationships, then ultimately none of it matters. All the things you're working for that you say are important um, if it's for your family, but you're not there present with them. Um, I've just seen a lot of trouble and I always wanted to avoid that from the beginning. And so it's been fun and rewarding having my own career, but also being able to put um, my family first and have been very blessed to have a spouse who's also gainfully employed, who also helps support the family. And so to on, to honor his contribution too, and that it's, uh, I could probably couldn't have worked part-time and, um, cared for them as well. So it's, we're all in this together and just having so much fun, Anisha. <laughs> That's good. And I love your uh, Sunday posts with the boys. Um, it's always <laughs> enjoyable when Sunday comes around and I hop onto um, Instagram and see what kind of adventures that you're, you're going on with your family. It, it does bring me joy to see you, yeah, enjoying life and not constantly working and talking about pharmacy, which is a trap we can all fall into. Um, so tell me about, um, I guess, your initial journey into retail pharmacy and what it was truly like to to work as a pharmacist, because I know that it's hard. It is still a cha challenging place. Everyone, you know, who's in the pharmacy pr profession is aware of the burnout and the difficulties. Um, what was your experience? So it was very mixed. It was a huge blessing that I had a great job that supported my family very well and that I could just go to. I worked two days a week, two evenings a week. So I loved that schedule. I loved seeing patients and working with my pharmacy staff, but it also very acutely felt like, oh, like a different part of healthcare. Like we're not treated the rest the way rest of healthcare is. It's just felt like being a part of a fast food chain with everything on the line, that there's a huge responsibility that all of this ultimately is on my license. And I was working at a 24 hour Walgreens, so it never closed. We do more than a thousand prescriptions a day. And that was like eight to 12 hour shifts I was working. I was aware that hundreds of prescriptions were under my name. And if they hurt someone or killed someone like that was under my name. And so it was an enjoyable job, but it was also very stressful. And while I enjoyed helping patients, I just really didn't like the, the interactions that things like a drive-through lane, actually there was two drive-through lanes brought that people weren't seeing us as professionals, more like a give me this now and I don't want to pay any money for it and only bringing their stress when I'm a very positive person and tried to make every encounter as good as I could. It was really frustrating when we weren't treated with the respect that I saw in most other areas of health care. And so it... It started off feeling like when I first graduated, I was like, I have the perfect job. I love it so much. And then over a 10 year period, like the sheen started wearing off. And by the 10 year mark I hit, I just worked at the same company all those years. By the time I hit 10 years, I started feeling like, okay, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? This was a really good job, but now I'm trapped because I have this advanced degree, the doctor of pharmacy, but I can't use it anywhere other than retail pharmacy, which sure I could go to a different pharmacy, but like, it's really not that different. It's just a different flavor of like the same exact job. And at this point, like you were talking about going and getting a residency or doing something else with else within the profession just felt like such a heavy lift, especially at this time in my life with my family that I was really reasonably not going to go get a residency and then get paid nothing while I slave for a year and then maybe be uh, able to get another job after that that was marginally better than the one I had. So I felt really stuck and like, I have this amazing degree, but then there's also nothing else I can do. So it was really cool. And it was, I, I realized that like I was feeling the golden handcuffs that a lot of people don't have the earning power that pharmacists do, but I also felt completely stuck that like, okay, this is what I picked. I can do one job the rest of my life, or I have to go back to school and start all over again. And that just felt really frustrating, Anisha. It felt 
strange that few people could relate to being so siloed in a specific career. I, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people feel very similarly to you. I have friends who are in retail pharmacy who also go through, have been going through that similar struggle um, and not knowing where to go next or maybe even not even having the confidence to go anywhere because mm-hmm. you've been in that retail space and the same company, potentially the same team, the same workflow, and you haven't worked outside of that for so long that trying to even apply for other jobs in a slightly different area um, can be quite like it, 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 it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, it takes and, a lot of energy. And we're not like being prepared and trained and professionally developed to do more with our career. The whole time we're just like clocking in, filling the prescriptions, clocking out. There's no like professional growth really that's happening unless you, I don't know, tr- like choose to do it yourself. So you were not built in a system of like growth and achievement and leveling up. We're just like, just hit the metrics and that's all that matters. <laughs> and the, the metrics seem to grow. <laughs> The, the targets that they That's the awful. targets that they expect from you uh, <laughs> definitely grow each year with yeah. no additional resource um, yeah. or funding at times. Um, so I, I completely understand why you made the choices that you made. But at that time when you had hit that 10-year mark, what helped you to navigate from that to, hey, actually, do you know what? I want to try an entrepreneur journey and see where I fit in from that Uh-oh. that point of view. <laughs> That's where it gets like really fun and exciting. So at that point, kind of three things combined really well for me. So the first was that as a pharmacist, I know firsthand how challenging it can be to maintain our health and well-being whilst caring for others. I am a true believer of making the time to look after my physical, mental and emotional health and I love the idea of using natural supplements to support me on this journey. That's why I was so excited to find The Naked Pharmacy. Their products are 100% plant-based and naturally sourced, 100% biodegradable and it feels really safe to know that they are formulated, tested and manufactured to the same standard as a pharmaceutical product. However, the most important fact to share is that their CEO and founder, Kevin Levers, is a pharmacist with over 35 years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry. I love that as a community, we can support our pharmacy colleague every time that we purchase a product. As a Pharmacist Diaries listener, you get an exclusive 20% discount off all Naked Pharmacy products using the code PD20. Just visit www thenakedpharmacy.com and treat yourself to something new. The pandemic hit, so the world suddenly shifted in the way it worked and the way we interacted with people. And as part of that, um, I finally like started thinking about my career all this time. Anisha, I, I would just like submit resumes to any job posting around me, but like it was the worst resume. And I didn't even try, but I was like trying, like I'll just... I'll just put it out there. Maybe someone will hire me, but I wasn't really, I was trying to do something with my energy, but that's all I could think of. Um, So the combination of COVID happening, the world shutting down, like my whole neighborhood just picks up their laptop, comes home and works, including my husband. And I was still having to go to work because pharmacists can't work remotely, at least to just be able to take their laptop home and say, I'll just work from home today. And so seeing that, that like, oh, I really am physically stuck to this job. I am clocking in and out for every minute of my time. And that's not how, one, I want to work. And that's not how wealthy people become wealthy by clocking in and out for every dollar they earn. So I'd always known that, but this felt like the flashing sign of like, well, nothing's changing. So nothing's going to change. You're going to clock in for every minute you work for the rest of your life. So that combined with getting on the internet, Anisha, before this, I wasn't like online. I had an Instagram account to show like pictures of my family, but I had nothing professionally online or in real life. I had was a member of no societies, no organizations. I was just like keeping my head down and working. So I created a LinkedIn account and tried I I got on there to see like what other jobs there were because Indeed wasn't giving me good jobs. 
And once I got on LinkedIn, that kind of changed everything because I saw like future and possibility. Because before, when you're just working in the same job with the same people for so many years, you just feel like that's your whole world. And once I got on there and saw other pharmacists doing not only cool things within pharmacy, but kind of like doing different paths, it felt like I was in a cave before and it was really dark and I was like fumbling around and then come seeing like LinkedIn and all the opportunity was like coming out of the cave into the light and I couldn't unsee it. And it felt like, oh, like hope and freedom and like I could actually do anything I want. I never learned about any of these things in pharmacy school. No one who I worked with was having these kinds of conversations. This is cool. I can take my career like I can take charge of it myself. I don't have to wait for a perfect job to hire me. I'm just going to go like take charge and either find the perfect job or make my own. And so it was incredibly liberating and it kind of put the onus on me to do something rather than hoping something would just change. I think that's the joy of entrepreneurship is that you you take that control. Yeah. You you gain the courage because sometimes it can be challenging, you know, when I started this podcast I you know, had some reservations or anxieties. Would anyone listen to it? And then I was like, who cares? Just go out and do it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the connection with people because that's where it started during like COVID when conferences stopped. And I thought, you know, I still want to connect with other pharmacists within the profession. I was teaching at a, um, a pharmacy school. So I was identifying that a lot of the students didn't really understand or grasp the variety of um, roles that they could go into and also the skill set that they need to achieve those, you know, um, career prospects or interviews. And I just thought, what can I do to support them that is something that they do for fun. So I listen to so many podcasts for fun, uh, especially when I was pregnant. I was listening to a lot of podcasts on parenting, on giving birth and all sorts of other things I was enjoying. And it just kind of clicked with me that actually, you know what, a, a podcast would be really useful. It's something that a lot of my students could listen to on the way to Um, university or on the way home because a lot of the students in London still live at home because of the cost of living and they live with their families and they just travel about an hour to come into university every day so I knew they would be on Spotify or other apps listening to music or whatever it was or watching YouTube Um, so how can I support them from an educational point of view as well as give them insight into people's lives that they would never ever get access to on a day-to-day basis. They would just not have the exposure. And then during COVID, they have zero exposure because there was no placements. There was no experience for them for well over a year and a half. All of that stopped. So I just thought, wing it, let's give it a go and see what happens. And obviously three years later, here we are. (laughs) And that whole journey into entrepreneurship, I didn't even see it initially. I was like, this is just a fun, cool passion project. And then when I started seeing the value, I was like, no, I can gain the courage to take this and build it into what I want to build it. And it's really helped me to realize um, how much I don't really like being employed by someone. Uh, (laughs) No offense to my current employer. If you're listening, I do love working. But in an ideal world, I love being my own boss. I never knew this about myself. I never knew how much joy there is in having that kind of creative element of choosing the pathway that you want to go down and what your company is going to look like, what you know content you're going to put out there, who you're going to have conversations, managing your own time. I mean, what a privilege, genuinely. Because I go to work and when you clock in and clock out, there are expectations of you and you have to fulfill those. And now I can create my own schedule around parenting, around my routine, when I want to go to the gym, when I want to cook food, when I want to clean or whatever it is I want to do. Um, That's on me. And that change and that shift is helping to keep me motivated to eventually get to the point where I can go into full-time entrepreneurship. Yes. Amen to everything you just said. It really is what I found to be one of the greatest wealths in life is control of your time. That 
you can control how you spend your time and what you do. And I, I'm a very creative person, but I don't think I knew or honored or recognized that for the years between probably 16 until a couple of years ago, because I was just so focused on schoolwork and achieving and, you know, like building a successful life that, you know, whatever that means, but bringing your whole self to what you do and controlling something that like you get to create something new into the world that didn't exist before is so fulfilling and rewarding. If I had known it was this awesome, I probably would have quit and taken like half my paycheck way sooner because it's just so worth it um, that I would have, knowing what I know now, I would have sacrificed a significant amount of my income just to have this freedom that money is not everything. And ultimately you really can build and earn more when you go all in on yourself than just depending on one stream of income for the rest of your life. Oh, that resonates with me so well. And I I genuinely, again, same as you, I did not know. I was so clueless. I mean, I feel like society has kind of brainwashed us to believe that, you know, going all in on education, which don't get me wrong, is really important, but going on all in on this professional education and then following this professional pathway in the sort of nine to five, mm-hmm. working for somebody else and society, then it's like, oh, you're a pharmacist. Like you are different. You are successful simply because you've got that title and people yep. know generally how much you earn. And then yeah. they're saying, oh, yep, you're successful. So they, you get put into this little box. What a sad mm-hmm. box to be in, to be fair. <laughs> um, and I just think we as pharmacists, we have so much skill set that we don't even realize until we utilize it in a different way. So when I started the podcast and when you look at the whole creativity, the innovation, the digital side, learning about podcasting, learning about the different platforms I can use from microphones to cameras, YouTube, Spotify, marketing, sales, like project management, hiring interns. I'm nowhere near where you are. I'm like 10% of your journey right now into entrepreneurship. But yeah, it doesn't matter. But the learning curve that I've had so far has been incredible. I feel like I haven't learned this much in pharmacy as I have in learning the entrepreneurship journey and choosing what this pathway looks like. And that is so cool. It's genuinely so cool. And I know I get to share that with you because you've, you've been there and you're on that journey. And um, it's just really exciting to know that there are people like you and me out there. And there are people like us on LinkedIn. So if people are watching or listening to this video and you feel motivated and you feel like things resonate here, know that you can find people within this network to learn from, to you know, gain that inspiration and that motivation from, and that you're not the only one out there. There, there is a way for you to take an idea and pursue it into a huge dream if you really want it to. And you've definitely got the skill set. It's just kind of finding it and just releasing it, like how you came out your cave. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I'm glad you addressed that. That I think uh, those of us in pharmacy just think like, okay, I have this skill set. People keep telling me like, I have this amazing skill set, but we usually just think through it of the lens of like, what job can that get me? And like, Mm. I can do this clinical thing. I can do that clinical thing, but really it's so much bigger than that. And it's so much bigger than pharmacy. Your skill set is you can do something hard and you can figure out how to learn. And when you can apply that to real world skills, like Anisha and I are figuring out the like awkward way of like, how does YouTube work? How does Spotify work? How does monetizing your idea work? How does like creating content work? It's the same principle. It's the exact same principle. You just have to learn how to do something and get proficient at it. That is the biggest real real world skill you have. And it will take you so much farther than just like whatever little jobs are in your area, which if you want to pursue those, that's amazing. I don't, I love pharmacy and I, I would not want to put anyone down in who's pursuing something in pharmacy, but, but to think bigger than just like our profession and what those skills can teach you, because what I've seen differentiate, like people like you and what I've learned is that 
people who can learn real world skills and apply real world skills do so much better at being able to build an intentional life than just saying very smart in a silo. It's it's being able to be awkward and to try and to fail, but to apply into the real world what's happening and what you want to build that really separates people who are doing and building and being more fulfilled than people who just, I'm wording this so awkward, but like, don't ever like think in the real world and learn what's really world. They're just staying so academic and learning only within the institution of education. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's difficult. No, it is difficult to explain. I know what you mean because a lot of us, we're we're kind of we we are trained to think inside specific boxes mm-hmm. that if you do this element of education or you get this certification this is the job that you're going to get and you kind of know that you're going to land into that pathway because of the choices that you make and you're right the world is so much bigger and the skills that you learn to become a pharmacist can be applied in so many other places like marketing i never thought like I would have a clue about marketing and I'm loving it. I'm loving even the micro changes. Like, oh, I get a couple of email subscribers because I put out a lead magnet. Like, whoa, let's do this. Who even knew that I would be able to enjoy getting a few email subscribers and uh, that a pharmacist would get, you know, satisfaction and reward from providing a free PDF in exchange for an email, but it lights me up because it, it's those small steps that you're making. You know that things that you're doing are making changes to the people that you are reaching out to. And that in itself is really rewarding. And things are going to go wrong, but actually I'm quite enjoying that. I'm enjoying understanding what doesn't work so that I can make the necessary steps to change that for me and the brand. And it's okay because then you know what works and doesn't work. And it doesn't feel like failure to me in any way, shape or form. It's just understanding what my audience likes. It's understanding my ideal customer avatar, things that I have didn't even know what an ideal customer avatar even really is until I started learning a little bit more about entrepreneurship and who are you you targeting in terms of your audience? Who are the people who are listening to you and understanding what their needs are, what their problems are, what their challenges are? And then providing the content that resonates with them so that your downloads do increase or your email subscribers do increase or you want to develop something like which then generates that income for your company. It makes sense. So when you send out those emails as a sales strategy, it works. And all of these things are skills that we know how to do as pharmacists, but we're just applying them in a different pathway, but we just don't realize it until we're in it which is really cool. I guess from from your perspective, like going into entrepreneurship, um, what was your idea and how did it play out in terms of making that idea a reality? Having a career in pharmacy can at times feel like an uphill battle. The constant demands, the pressures, and finishing each day like your to-do list was just as large as it was in the morning. It may leave you questioning if there's more to your professional journey. It's a question that I confront regularly, but one that drives me to make positive changes towards a better working life. Daily and weekly reflection exercises has really helped me to understand my approach to working life, what improvements I can make and what strategies I can use to turn those draining pressures into opportunities for growth. Let's take a moment to reflect on your professional journey and how you approach your goals. What's working well for you and where do you see areas for improvement? I have seen success with time blocking, weekly meetings with my husband to synchronize schedules and task batching. These three strategies alone have been game changers towards my productivity and efficiency. If this resonates with you and you'd like to explore this even deeper, immerse yourself in my new quiz, what's holding you back from achieving your professional goals? you will discover one specific area to focus on and hopefully this will kickstart your journey towards a more rewarding career. It only takes 60 seconds to complete and the link is below. Let me know how you get on. Yeah, so for a long time, I I said this 
all the time in the pharmacy. Like if you want to be wealthy, you have to own your own company because like clocking into a job, you're never going to achieve wealth or time freedom if your time is tied to earning. And I said that as I'm doing it, I'm like, but I can't do it because I'm a pharmacist and I'm not going to open a pharmacy. Cause I always thought if you want to do entrepreneurship, like you open a pharmacy and with the overhead costs and the startup costs, I am, I'm not a risky person. I don't want to put half a million dollars into an idea and hope it works. And so, um, I started with just online, like from scratch building, a digital course. And so that took like almost no money, just a lot of time. And there's like no risk. Like if it doesn't work, I invested a couple hundred dollars, no big deal. And so I started by offering an online course and had like, I I was building this all in public on LinkedIn. And so people knew what I was doing. So when I offered the course, I offered it to some beta testers and they came in for a couple hundred dollars, reviewed it. I redid the whole thing and then launched it again. And over time, this online course over the course of three years grew and grew and grew. And so what started as a $500 product has now grown to, I think it's a $5,000 product. And we have had trained almost 400 pharmacists across the world. And it's been so fun and so rewarding because it's just been me and my computer in my house with like the most basic recording equipment. So the whole investment to get started that you know, spread out over time was probably like a couple thousand dollars, if that, and seeing that it was mostly me taking an idea, teaching it in a simple way to someone and helping solve someone's problem was able to ultimately in two and a half years, cross a million dollars in revenue with like, I have no MBA. I don't have, I don't even have a business plan. I'm just doing what you do, like pursuing an idea, failing a bunch of times, but seeing the the triggers for what's worked and the signals for like, oh, okay, that worked. I'll keep doing that some more. And mostly just learning in public and watching other people build and saying, okay, that made me click. How can I apply that to what I'm doing? Oh, that made me pay money. How can I apply that to what I'm doing? And so it's just been a fun experiment in public that's been really scrappy, but being honest that it's scrappy and like you're just starting and you just want to change the world it's been able to grow in a really fun way. Oh, that make I mean, first of all, a million dollars in revenue is like amazing. I remember when you did the post on LinkedIn and I was just like jumping for joy and excitement for you because it truly just helps you to realize how, again, you put this idea into practice and you keep trying, you keep understanding what's not working and making those micro adjustments and look what it can do. Mm -hmm. And you are building a life again, like you said, on a laptop in your house, you're still allowing the time, the energy, the patience for your family, and you're still loving your career and the journey that you're on rather than turning up to the Walgreens, living by their rules, <laughs> clocking in when they want, getting those stats that they need. And though that generated the income to start your journey and kind of get you into the, the pharmacy space, and I'm sure you're very grateful and mm-hmm. for that opportunity and all of that, like we're not insulting poor Walgreens here. But no way. But no, yeah, I don't no, want no. to be there but forever. Yeah, yeah. You've understood that it wasn't for you long term. And the initial idea of you saying that, hey, the pharmacy degree is here to help me to get a good job, a good salary, and something that will allow me to build a family life. Because at the end of the day, you need that income, right? To support a growing mm-hmm. family of four boys. So it it did it served its purpose. But then you needed to spread your wings. Like you said, you needed to come out of that cave and you needed to come out of that hibernation and show everybody who Jamie was. And that that is so cool. And I think you probably just think I was just doing my thing and I'm making decisions and I'm scrappy, like you said, and I'm just, you know, following on my journey. I'm seeing what someone else is doing and picking a little bit of what they're doing and putting it and implementing it into my business. And over time, all of those things have added up. But from my perspective, from the outsider's perspective and what I can see as to what you've created, what you've built, like the courage and the energy that you've put in is like, it's super inspirational. I love it. (laughs) 
I know it must oh, sound crazy oh. to you, and I knew that you would say that when crazy. I give you this, um, you know, you know, feedback. But it's true, Jamie. I see what you've been doing over, you know, the last year and a half, and it's really inspirational. It's really exciting that you've figured out how to make an entrepreneurial journey work for you as a pharmacist. And I think that there are so many people in our profession who need to step out their comfort zone, you know, and do similar things to what we're doing if they're not happy where they're at in the, you know, at this moment. Because there are lots of pharmacists who are happy. And don't, I love my hospital job. I love being a pediatric pharmacist. I love working in palliative care. And I absolutely love teaching in the pharmacy school. What I'm not happy with is the rigidity in terms of being in a certain place at a certain time that doesn't align with my life. That's what I find really hard because when it comes to my values and when I've done all that reflection and the work, everything has to align with home and Mm -hmm. home comes first. And if it doesn't fit into that, it doesn't fit into my life. And that's why I had to quit my job last year. I had to just bite the bullet and say that, look, this isn't working for me. This isn't working for my home life. I was traveling three hours a day. Oh, yeah, I know. I did it for like five years. I know. And the thing is, is again, like I lived in Dubai for five years and I felt like in, in, when I lived there, I wasn't progressing professionally at the rate that I needed to. What I didn't understand was I was. And I just didn't see it at the time. And I wasn't appreciating what I actually had. And it was only until I left that I realized that I had a really good opportunity there. And again, this is all because you're trying to fit into what society is expecting you to do. And when I was looking on LinkedIn, because I was on LinkedIn a lot back then, I was seeing my friends from residency and I was seeing their kind of trajectory in terms of their career pathway, how they had found a specialist area, how they are, you know, getting new jobs, how they were smashing their goals. And I just felt like I wasn't really moving. So I was in this place of comparing myself to the pharmacy society, which is an easy trap to go into, right? Yep. I then have a child move home, um, back to London and apply for some awesome jobs and I'm absolutely loving it but I made sacrifices and one of those was time and one of those was this travel in order to succeed and show that I'm a good pharmacist that I can be successful that I can be the specialist that everyone expects me to be or society Mm -hmm. expects me to be I can do it and more but in exchange I lost so much time There was times during COVID when I was going into the hospital where I didn't see my child for four days in a row. No joke. (gasps) I was going in in the morning before she woke up. I was coming home after she went to bed because the trains would cancel because they didn't have enough drivers due to the pandemic. And I'd have to wait 90 minutes for the next train to go home. And it killed me. Those That year was so incredibly hard. And she was incredible. She was amazing. She's pretty chilled out. She accepted it. But for me as a parent, that's not an enjoyable experience to go through and not one I ever want to put myself through. And it was a really good learning experience. We ended up moving into central London. After a few months, I was like, I'm done with this. This is not working for me. Like if I'm going to continue in the job, we all have to get up and move. I made my family move. I made her change, you know, daycare. I made her go out of her kind of stable environment for the job like (laughs) it sounds like I did some crazy things but now like I'm realizing the value of building that intentional life and not making sacrifices for my family where I don't need to the I feel like the employer needs to adjust their expectations to fit in to my life but it's hard to find that it's, it's hard to find that here, and I'm sure it's hard to find that in the U.S., but it is something that I think is really important. And it's good to know that there are other people like you out there. I even look at, like, at Tim, your financial pharmacist. I mean, 
He's built a great life. He's smashing it. And I'm loving what he's doing. And I'm loving the growth that he's going on. And I, again, a really inspirational pharmacist, someone who's been in the academic world. He's been in, you know, uh, the retail world and the clinical world as a pharmacist. But he also has understood what works for him and his multiple children as well and his family life and his wife. And he's prioritized that and built the business around it. And I think that that's a really kind of valuable point for this podcast is that if you are in a job and you're not quite happy and you're not really understanding why you're doing the things that you're doing, you have the power and the choice and you just need a little bit of courage to just push through and put your idea and make a change. That's that's genuinely how I feel. Oh, I agree. And I wish someone had told me this long before because it's easy to feel frustrated in a job, but to be able to channel your energy into building something that's a better life just feels so much better. And I think ultimately it helps you cope. Well, it does the two things. So if you're, if you're miserable in a job, you're, you're probably kind of two different personalities. One is like a traditional pharmacist that will probably always be fully employed, but that doesn't have a, f- a channel to put their energy into. And so once you find something that's like truly fulfilling and you're building it just for fun and like, maybe you'll get some income from it. It makes your whole life better and it makes either work better or it gives you the confidence to find work that better suits your needs, but to have the joy of building something on the side or for people who have different aspirations who, and who want to go all in on building their dream. It's so fun to build while you're working because as you've said, at least this is where I've come from is like, it's generally the joy of building that's fun. And I, and people can sense that you love what you do rather than like, Oh, I can monetize this idea. I'm just going to like go all in and like force their way into a successful business by doing something you love it. You're not only building an intentional life, but you're drawing the opportunities to you and it makes it so much easier. So kind of as you're balancing working with building it both kind of fuel each other. Cause you do need work for a while, um, until it can ease off. But like to be able to put your energy into something that's you is just like, it has ripple effects for your whole life and is so rewarding. And I think is really like the secret to success in entrepreneurship is having fun and not caring if it works. I mean, you know what I mean? Like in that uplifting way that like, I'm just doing this to help people and I'm going to keep doing it. I don't care if I need to earn the money today versus like, nope, I'm going all in on this thing. And like, I hope it works and I can support my family. That kind of ruins entrepreneurship because you put so much Mm. pressure on yourself. And I think that's the way we see it online is people, you know, like go big, go home, grind it out. And like, the idea that entrepreneurship is like that is so scary and kind of so opposite to what everyone in pharmacy wants. Like we're very risk averse. We like oh, totally doing what works. And so by taking away all of that element of risk and gumption and like being this really bold person and just building something that genuinely fulfills you, that's the fun and joy and freedom of entrepreneurship. And by doing something that you love that helps meet someone's need or a problem, that's all you need to have a successful company. And so to kind of take away the sheen of like all that personal development hype and just like do that thing that you love and that helps someone is rewarding and it makes entrepreneurship fun and not so, I don't know go big or go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that that's kind of the pathway that I followed because obviously I started Pharmacist Diaries whilst full-time working. I've now kind of created a kind of part-time relationship with the university. So they pay me per hour that I work, which is great, but it gives me the flexibility in terms mm-hmm. of parenting. Mm-hmm. And then I'm starting some work with another pediatric hospital where I'm not patient facing at the moment. So that again, allows me the flexibility to work from home. And then two days a week, I'm working on the podcast, which is great. Um, And eventually, I know that I'll get to the point where I can kind of like really cut back on the clinical work. I don't want to completely give it up. And I'm grateful that we are in a profession that allows us to work 
you know, one day a week or whatever it is that we want to do, but still fulfill all the other kind of dreams and aspirations that I have. So um, it's a work in progress. It doesn't need to be a go all in and go big and go home type situation. You can kind of find uh, a slower transition because of course, financially, we all need money and to pay our bills, et cetera. And that's the reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing. Um, but eventually, like I have this vision that I'm going to make it. I'm, I have, I want to manifest that. And I feel like doing that is going to bring me the reward and it's serving a community. And that like, when you talk about doing things that you love and serving a purpose, I know that I'm helping the community with regards to pharmacy careers. And that is what motivates me, but it will also generate income eventually. And I will be able to support my family. That's my goal. Well, and you're, you're on the right track by building your life now as best you can. And that's what's so cool about work right now is that it is more flexible and there is a gig economy that there wasn't so robustly, especially online Mm -hmm. in the past. And so we have more control over it and it takes doing things like you're doing to just start piecing together and to start taking action because the pieces fall in line as you start moving and building and saying like, well, this isn't perfect, but it's one step closer to what I want rather than just staying stuck and saying, well, I'm not going to move until I have it all figured out until the perfect thing comes because nothing's going to change. I think a lot of it, um, maybe you've experienced this too, is like your personal development and just putting the one next piece that you can in saying like, I know this isn't where I want to be, but this is the one next step and I, I'll figure it out after that. And just pulling it together and having a long enough time horizon to have the patience to build it. I love delayed gratification. I love it so much. And to say like, I know I'm not going to see the reward to this for years or decades, but that's why I'm starting now. So I can have it then. Yeah. Having the patience to build an intentional life over years. It's not sexy. It's not exciting. We all want things now. We want things how we want it right now. And it's easy to feel like, well, if I don't get it right now, then I don't want it. Have the energy to wait. Yeah, I don't yeah. want it. But uh, it's it's a real skill and leaves you ahead so much further than and other people who are just flash in the pan kind of energy. Or waiting for burnout and then realizing they need to. Yeah, or go waiting back for burnout and like making fight life force you to take a step back and then you have to, mm. you know, deal with getting yourself well and then getting ahead anyway. You get it. Yeah, we could go down a whole rabbit hole on this story. But, you know, <laughs> in general, I just yeah. think, like, what an amazing story that you have. What a great life that you've been able to build. And you've, you know, turned around a, a story where you weren't really necessarily fulfilled and, and feeling the joy within pharmacy, but still utilizing all your skill and knowledge and experience to do something else. Um, I'm sure that my. Uh, viewers and listeners within the UK will find it really inspiring to hear your journey. And I just, again, wanted to thank you uh, for making the time for me today and um, sharing your story. Thank you for having me on and being able to talk about this. And anyone who's listening, I would highly encourage you, if you feel like your story is not the story you want it to be, to make the changes and ignore people telling you what you should do and really listen to what it is you want to do and what's most important to you in this life, even if it's not social signs of success and something you're going to get complimented on doing the things that you really want to do or what are most important to you. Building into that is where you build the most fulfilling life and a life that's uniquely you. And I just encourage you to follow that and tap into what your heart wants to do. Maybe it's been a little while since you you've listened to it agreed oh thank you jamie um and that will be at the end of today's podcast